Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Let's talk a little bit about Tennessee here. They go on the road and they lose to Mississippi State. I got a hot take, guys, and, and I don't know if this is crazy. I think that with Tolu Smith back, I'm going to go ahead and say it, that, that this shouldn't be something that is looked at as a major upset. I think Mississippi State, who was 11-3 uh, and three coming into this game, um, when you get back a guy that was in the conversation for preseason SEC Player of the Year and you add it to a group that has already kind of figured out what they're doing, totally went for 23 tonight. I'm going to go ahead and say I don't think that this is necessarily an upset. I think it is something that we should have expected. I think Tennessee came into this just a little bit overrated. I'm on the Mississippi State bandwagon. I'm on the Chris Jans bandwagon, Mac. Tell me why I'm wrong. Oh, I, I don't necessarily think you're wrong. I mean, Tolu Smith is a handful now. And, um, you know, with Tennessee, I, I find it interesting, you know, in the beginning of the season, I kept talking about the defense or defense or defense. I feel like that's been the last couple of years, but not necessarily this year. I mean, they've got, you know, Dalton Connect, Steelers back. I mean, they've got a, a great backcourt, but uh, they're having a hard time stopping people. You know, the freshman Hubbard uh, had, has a good night once again. And, you know, that, that hasn't been the trademark of Rick Barnes's teams here of late. They've been teams that couldn't score but can really prevent you from scoring. I don't see that with this year's Tennessee team. Now they go to Carolina in the games like in the 90s, and that would have never happened a year or two ago. It doesn't mean they can't do things, they can't win, uh, but they're not going to win the way that uh, I, I thought that they would sort of have their DNA imprinted on them the last couple of years. But, uh, hey, I don't think you're wrong at all about uh, Mississippi State. I mean, Tolu Smith is a monster, and uh, if he's back and healthy – uh, good luck to all the big guys trying to deal with him. And uh, Hub Hubbard's electric. And then, you know, Chris does a really good job defensively. I mean, his teams guard you and they play hard. Good when you got any takes he, he on loves game? Guys, uh, he, he loves guys mm -hmm. like Hubbard, too. He, he's a perfect chance player because as long as you're playing hard, he'll let you loose. He'll give you that freedom and he gives it to Hubbard. And now, you know, again, they were a team that, that did well out of the gates and then it kind of caught up with them being without Tolu Smith. But, you know, Tennessee, I've just never been a believer in them being a Final Four team. I don't know if it's because of Rick Barnes and how long it's been since he went there or it's because of what they've had at Tennessee and just not being able to score the high clip up. and always, always having to win these, these kind of nail-biting games in the 60s. And, uh, yeah. again, Dalton Connect helps, but I still don't think they have enough. Yeah, they don't even have enough to win the SEC when you got Auburn and Kentucky and uh, I'll throw Alabama into that mix um, in the SEC as well. All right, I want to hit you guys with something, and we got Doug Gottlieb joining in, uh, fresh off of calling the North Carolina NC State game. I want to hit with you guys with something big picture because um, I have a theory. There, there's a stat from uh, from Evan Maya, who is one of these analytics guys. Uh, it runs a really good site, evanmaya.com. Um, it is home teams in the top seven conferences – uh, as of this very moment, are winning 66% of the time in conference play. That is up from 61% of the time the last two years. And Goodman, I know for people that are in remedial math like you, uh, that means that 5% gap is a pretty big statistical difference um, at this point of the season. Uh, and I think that means what you're looking at is home court advantage right now is better than it's been the last two seasons. And my theory is that because you have so many guys with fifth years and so many guys that are getting their COVID years and so many of these high major programs that aren't just the, the best teams in the league uh, that are getting 23, 24, 25 year olds from the lower ranks that are adults that have been through the ringer, that have been through multiple seasons of college basketball. My argument would be that the college basketball as a whole, it's not just something where there's parity. The bottom of these these conferences, like the, the middle to the bottom of these conferences have just caught up to the top of the leagues, especially when you see a lot of this NBA talent uh, jumping ship earlier to the, the professional ranks. Doug, we'll go to you first on this one. Am I where do you stand on that? Am I, am I crazy? Am I on the right track here? Or am I just kind of uh, Aaron Rodgers chasing conspiracy theories? Why home teams are, are more dominant? Yes, they've been better this year than they've been in the past. I mean, honestly, a lot of these places, they're not drawing as well. Um, yeah. You know, like there's, there's a lot of environments that used to be awesome that are not. They're still, you know, the best are still the best. I... I mean, I think part of it is everybody has players, right? I mean, that's that's one of the things. It's like everybody has some guys. Like, you just can't go in with nothing. 
Uh, there's a disparity between the best and not best. I would also say that the best teams aren't as dominant because most of them don't have the depth. Um, if they were really, there's not that much difference. I mean, we talked about Kansas lost tonight. Okay. They have four guys, you know, like they got four dudes. That's it. Every, outside of that, they're kind of plugging holes, but um, I don't know. I, uh, I don't think home court advantage in terms of uh, the passion of fans, especially this season, is as good. We haven't reached, you know, students are just now coming back on campus. Every game's on TV, so it's not as much of a thing in many places to go to games. But I don't think it has to do with I, – I would say that everybody has players, and, um, you know, guys are transferring up levels, so you have older players, and so the, the teams that are mid – uh, can beat you, but I don't know. I, I think it's it's kind of the same as it's always been. If anything, I think home court advantage in terms of the fans isn't as good as it used to be. Thank you for watching The Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.